folks, and welcome back. Uh, sorry it's been so long since I've done one of these. I ran into a couple of issues that sort of made this a little bit harder than it needed to be. Uh, the first was that I lost the center row of keys on my Mac keyboard. Those went out, and as it turns out, if you lose the center row of keys, you can't swear, so I was effectively rendered mute on Twitter. I'm not sure that that was a bad thing, though. Uh, secondly was this is kind of a very experimental well, that wasn't what project, I to do. so I ran into quite a bit more that trial really and error I to do. than I expected. Also quite a bit more swearing than I expected, so that was kind of a bummer. Uh, but I did eventually get things worked out. Lastly, I ran into what I can only describe as quite a few really bad brain days. Those kinds of days where you're convinced that all you're really making is firewood and that you're never ever going to be creative again. In case you were curious, all of us have them and I've had them for the last month or so. So I eventually decided to just kind of give myself a break and then come back to things fresh. And hopefully I will continue to be creative and I will continue to share some of this stuff with you and we'll see if we can't make a mess together. So without further ado, here's what we're doing this time. So those of you who've had the pleasure of owning a Shepoko, you probably remember okay, doing something do like this. We have the Sharpie loaded, and we're going to try and run the Hello World program and see how this works. Let's light this candle. This was the Hello World test program. Most of you probably remember this from your first setup of the Shepoko. You zip-tied a Sharpie to your router, then you caused it to run a little program which drew the Shapeoko logo. Oh, sweet. Now I would imagine like most of us, you are just happy to find out that this thing works. <laughs> After you've wired everything up that nothing released the magic blue smoke and died, that things were drawing just fine. But some of you were probably like me and thought, wait a minute, I can draw with this thing too? This could be kind of fun. So it led me to the idea of, what if I could draw on fabric? How would that work? So in order to make this work, I had two basic problems. The first one was attaching this pin to the router. Now, I could go back and do like we did with Hello World and use zip ties, but that seems like kind of a pain in the butt. I also don't want to have to remove my router every time I want to do this. So what I decided to do was to make something that would slide on the front of this piece, this aluminum piece here. That way all I have to do is loosen these two screws up, slide the router up a little bit, and I could slide something onto this. So after a ton of trial and error, I kind of came up with this piece here. And I'll show you how this is put together. So there are two basic pieces here. This is your back plate that slides onto the router and it's just attached with some screws here that lets you adjust these for a tight fit. Um, I've also got a small piece of craft foam in here that just applies a little bit of pressure to keep things from wiggling too much back and forth. Uh, there are also two threaded inserts here, which is what we use to attach our front piece, and a channel here for the pin that is matched in the front piece. So essentially, this just slides the router up, and we push this in, and slide the router back down. Now we've got room to put a pin in here, clamp this on, and we'll be ready to go. And this just allows you to very quickly swap pins out if we need to. So we could just unscrew this and pop the pin out and get things back going again. So I'll show you how to build these two pieces and put them together. Okay, so I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time 
on how I made the carbide create file this time. I think it would make this a way too long video for doing that. Um, suffice it to say there were a lot of subtractions on shapes and things like that. But these are your two brackets for the upper piece. Uh, this particular circle is what fits my DeWalt router. If you've got the Makita router, you may have to do some size finagling with this to get this right uh, so that it fits well. So these are your two brackets that fit up against the router. This is the back piece. It's got the slightly larger holes here for putting those quarter inch inserts in. And the front piece has got the smaller holes where the quarter inch bolts will actually fit through. And this is a channel for your pin that is matched on both sides. I'm going to go ahead and include these carbide create files as a link in the description and you can take a look at them there. Okay, so we're starting with a 10 by 10 piece of three quarter plywood. I've already got everything zeroed out down here under our corner um, and we're going to go ahead and cut this and this will cut out all the pieces for our pin holder. Okay, so now we've got our pieces for our upper and lower bracket here. And this is the front and back of our pin piece. We'll put some inserts in these larger holes, and then these are where we'll put our screws through to fit into the inserts. Now you'll notice I don't have anything cut here for the, uh, the wood screws that are gonna go through and connect to this. That's because you're gonna probably need to do a little bit of finagling with them just to make sure that they fit right and that they're tight around this piece. So I'm gonna cut these out and then we're gonna show you a little bit more on um, how to get this thing set up. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is fit these little guys to our router. Now, these should, with these little rounded edges, push right onto the router. They'll be a little bit stiff, but they'll pop right on like that, right? And we'll have one above and one below. Now you'll notice with this, that it sticks out a little bit proud of here. And what we want is for that to be as close to this edge as possible. And this is where I said you'll probably have to work this a little bit. Um, so you'll want to take a pencil and mark that on your upper and lower block so that um, we can kind of sneak up on this measurement here and get this as close to the front as possible. That way, when your other piece sits up against this, it should sit flat and it shouldn't wobble back and forth like this. So we'll go ahead and get these trimmed up and um, then I'll show you how to fit everything on the router. So once you have your pieces fitting the way you want them to, um, we're gonna go ahead and loosen up the router and slide it up. Always remember to tighten this back when you're done and you're not using the pin piece anymore. Otherwise, you will have some really unpredictable results when you're trying to do this with wood again. So I'm gonna slide one of these up top and one of these on the bottom, All right? And you can clamp them here because basically what you're going to need to do is mark this so that you know where to put your holes in the front. So I'm going to mark this and then I'm going to mark the sides here. I can't quite get in there, but this will just give me an idea of where I can drill my holes at to go through and connect to these pieces. Okay, so now my back plate is drilled and you'll notice I also countersunk these because I don't want the screw heads to interfere with these two pieces when they come together and we want them to be able to lay flat. So this is on. What I'll typically do now with this is since I've got my marks on the back, 
and I know one of these goes at the very top. I'll mount the top one, I'll screw that one in, and then I'll slide it onto the router and make sure that I've got that bottom piece lined up and then screw it on. Usually I'll mark my holes or I'll get the screws started on that. But once you go ahead and attach those, you want them to fit as close on this bottom and top as possible so that you don't get wiggled this way. And we'll go ahead and do that. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this off and then I'm gonna put some craft foam in here and that'll give me a little bit of pressure on this so that it will hold straight to the face. Okay, so the other thing you wanna do is we're gonna put these inserts in, in the bottom holes down here. Now, since I'm gonna be screwing things in from this side, what I like to do is screw these in, these inserts in from the back side. Um, that gives you a lot more pull coming through. So if I just screw this in, now typically you can just break these loose with a quick twist and pull back out, right? And that should leave the inserts in. If you have problems with them staying in and just kind of unscrewing and you pull them out, take a little bit of lubricant of some kind and lubricate the threads on this piece and then screw them on and, and try and pull them back out that way. Uh, sometimes they do get stuck and you need to do that. But uh, we've got our two inserts in now on our front piece. So that means we can screw the face plate on with just a set of bolts. So as I mentioned before, there are two basic problems to this. The first one we've already solved. We've got a good steady base for our pin now. We can use that and it pulls off easily on the machine. The second piece is how this t-shirt lays flat on the board. Now, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see what I mean. When the pin comes down, it has a tendency to catch and you have wrinkles on the t-shirt. And no matter how hard I stretched, I was getting that, that problem. So what I needed was a way to get the t-shirt stretched on this, but also give it a little bit of wiggle room. And so what I came up with was a different kind of base for this that wasn't a flat base. Now, there's a couple other things here. If I'm gonna try and do something on this waste board, you notice that my pen sticks out front, which means I'm gonna get a little bit more space this way and a little bit less space this way. So what I wanted to do first was create myself a base that would allow for that. And I've, cut, I've routed a channel here. I did this on a router table, but you can do it on the Shape Oco as well that basically will let me slide this board to where it locks in on this channel, right? And I lined it up so that the pin is as far back as it can go right now, and that gives me a good space right in here for doing my T-shirt. Now, what I've got here is I've got a big pocket in this area. When I stretch the T-shirt out, that means I've got a little bit of room and the t-shirt itself acts like a spring when that pin comes down so that I get a nice even line across the whole shirt. There's also this area on the outside which is where my frame sits. Now the frame piece fits down like this and it allows me to push that t-shirt in, stretch it across and the frame gets clamped down on the sides and stretches that t-shirt and each time I clamp these things down on the edges I kind of pull that t-shirt down between here and the frame you'll see how that works when we've got the t-shirt set up in there I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on this one for the most part because it's pretty simple except for this one file cuts out your two pieces your first piece is your base and it's going to be cut out of a 15 and a quarter inch square piece, right? And that base gets a pocket in this section and a pocket in this section. This serves as a lip around the edge. 
and then we turn off most of this other stuff and you're going to cut out of a quarter inch piece this section you'll cut the center piece out and that will serve as our frame that goes around the edge of our border if you need to get more space in between where the frame and the shirt sit you can expand this out a little bit but again I'll include the uh, the create files that I used for this and you can download them in the description okay so I've laid my t-shirt out on the board just kind of draped over it right now and I put a small piece of tape at approximately where I want the center of my design to be now in order for this to work well what we're going to need to do is put the t-shirt put the board inside the t-shirt so this is kind of a pain and you probably won't be able to see most of this but basically we want to fit the t-shirt fairly centered on our board and then we kind of want to lay it down to where there's not bunched up bits of t-shirt underneath so we'll kind of want to stretch it out a little bit this way and this way to get the sleeves out from under. Otherwise our board's not going to be level. All right, and once we've got that to where we need it, I need to line up that ridge in the front so that sits down. Okay, now that we've got this fairly flat, we put our frame down. And when we clamp this, what I want to do, I want to make sure that this piece doesn't come into anywhere that's going to interfere with the rail. So it needs to slide in as much as possible. Okay, so I tighten this down just slightly, and then I'm going to pull some of this shirt to me to stretch it tight and clamp that down. And then do the same on the other side. So now I've got the shirt in place. We're stretched out a little bit, so this is giving us a little bit of cushion. You notice I've got all my stuff tucked up here so that it's not getting in the way of these rails. So when the piece when the uh, trolley moves back and forth, it's not going to catch on any of this stuff. So I'm gonna do something a little bit different for this one. I'm gonna do a three color version of this. So I'll be doing one pass in yellow, one in orange, and then another in red. And I'll offset each one of the passes so that the, uh, the piece will have kind of a, a segmented, almost 3D-ish sort of look. And we'll see how that goes. Okay, so I've got my yellow pin in and I've got myself roughly in the middle of where I wanna be. And the touch pro piece works exactly the same way as it does with wood. You drop this pin down until you start to make a mark on the paper. Okay, I'm gonna pop that up just a hair. We're gonna call that close enough. And then I'm gonna go ahead and set zero. Zero everybody out. Then I'll load up my design and take it from there. Okay, so now we have our nice little lizard in yellow. Now we're going to go ahead and set up the orange pen and we're going to do a second trace and we're going to offset it a little bit that way. So I typically just bring this to the very front of the machine and then go ahead and loosen these guys up. And I've got enough room at the front now to pull that pen down. Put a cap on it, grab my orange pen. Stuff the orange pen back up in there. I'll leave the cap on for right now. And tighten it up. Okay. You don't need to go uber tight with it. Just, you know, just, just snug it up. You don't want to bust one of these. That would be really bad. So now that I've got that, it's simply a matter of returning to our current X and Y offset and then resetting our Z again like we've done.
Okay, so now that we're back at our current our current x y axis, we're going to set our z again real quick. First thing I want to do though is I'm going to set the machine up for uh, millimeter steps, and I'm going to go back two steps, and then over two steps. All right. Now I'm going to come down and try and reset our Z for just contact. Okay, now that we've got everything set, we're going to run our pass in orange now. Okay, so you can see now we've got a, a nicer outline. We've got a little bit of our yellow still in here and a little bit of our orange. Now we're gonna do a red pass. Okay, now our red pen is loaded up. I've got it offset again, and we're gonna do the other pass in red. Here's our lizard, and I'm gonna come in close on him so you can get an idea of what those multiple passes kind of do is leave us with an odd offset. And since he's full of swirling designs anyway, it gives us a really interesting little 3D kind of effect to him. Um, he almost looks a little blurry from a distance, but then your eyes sharpen up and you see the different pieces of him. So I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. So this is one thing you can try. So I've done a couple more shirts since then and I'm pretty pleased with how they've turned out. I think it would also be interesting to use this for, say, spot color on boxes or signs or things like that. I'm also tempted to play around and see if sticking a wood-burning pin in there will do something nice. So it leaves me a couple of options in there, and I'd like to see some other people try it and see what kind of uses they can come up with. So until next time, have fun, make things, and always be nice to the cats.